In this video, I'm going over virtualization. I will be specifically covering containers, type 1 hypervisors, type 2 hypervisors, and everything in between. So if you want to know everything about virtualization, stay tuned. So let's start out with type one hypervisors. I'm not gonna spend a lot of subject on this. My very first video I ever uploaded to YouTube was actually over type one hypervisors and I go into a lengthy PowerPoint. Uh, actually, it wasn't that, that lengthy. It was about six minutes. I'll link it up here. Um, the audio and video is not great on it, but there's still some good content in it. Uh, the short of it is this, uh, type one hypervisors, uh, VMware, ES, XI, uh, Citrix's Zen server, and Microsoft's um, Hyper-V. These things are your type one hypervisor or bare metal hypervisors. What that means is it doesn't actually function as a workstation on a type one hypervisor. These are meant to sit in server racks or in closets somewhere um, to where you're not actually physically sitting at them. They do have consoles, but usually it's just a terminal or a console screen to where there's no graphics or anything like that. And then all the virtual machines actually load up in them. You typically always control these from another location and almost every one of them is headless or operates in a headless environment, meaning you don't need a monitor or a keyboard and mouse attached to them. So that is type one. I'm not going to go into like these are mainly for businesses. If you're in a data center, they're everywhere. Most of them is ESXi based and VMware pretty much dominates this market. And rightfully so, it's a very good product and I don't have anything bad to say about them. Other than it's a little pricey, especially when you add in like high availability and other things, but um, that's neither here or there. So the second form of hypervisor is called a type two hypervisor. Typically these are run on a host which means if you have Linux or Windows or whatever it might be, you'd actually run these on top of your operating system. So you'd boot into Linux and then you'd boot into your hypervisor. Now this is gonna be VMware Workstation or uh, Boxes or QEMU or VirtualBox. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. Those are just some of the biggest ones. Um, my personal take on these is VMware Workstation is a very limited skill set for the free version you can load existing virtual machines but you can't modify them however it works the best out of the box meaning you install it run it and then just load your virtual machine and it loads every time on pretty much any hardware which is amazing my second one for ease of use would be virtualbox i think it's a lot easier to use than you know qemu but virtualbox kind of makes my number two list because it's a standalone and everything runs on VirtualBox fairly easily and it is completely uh, free and open source I believe and it's an Oracle uh, is the company parent company that's in charge of this product and it's been out for a long time so uh, I know VirtualBox quite well and also VMware. Now the third and probably the most prevalent that you see on forums are QEMU based hypervisors. So QEMU is actually kind of like the back end or all in one hypervisor. However, it runs on like config files and things like that. If you want an actual graphic user interface for QEMU, uh, you're typically using boxes or you're using vert manager. Um, these types of front ends make it so you can easily create virtual machines rather easily. Now, why I say it's the most prevalent that you hear about all the time is because most people are doing what's called PCIe pass-through. This is passing through an actual graphics card to the virtual machine natively. So where you blacklist this card, your computer boots up, doesn't see the card at all, the actual host operating system, but when you launch your virtual machine, the virtual machine connects to that card and then it works as if you were actually booted into Windows. So you see it all the time and it's really evolved over the last couple of years. I'm probably gonna um, take a graphics card from my secondary computer and actually demonstrate this. I just wanted to get it to a point to where it's more flushed out. Looking Glass is just starting to kind of come about and it's uh, kind of a 
obscure project, but it's still very interesting to see. Level 1 Text has some great video over Looking Glass, and Wendell over there has done a fantastic job explaining it. But uh, it is very technical and not for the faint of heart. If you're not a technical person, the chances of you doing a PCIe pass-through and getting that on a virtual machine is slim and none. And I honestly guarantee you, you're not going to be able to do it easily following any guide just because you need to know quite a bit about Linux and how virtual machines work prior to attempting such a thing. So uh, that is type 2 and type 1 hypervisors condensed down. So now that you have a basic understanding of those hypervisors, there's some really oddball one that I just kind of wanted to go over. I couldn't really put this in a type 2, but I couldn't really put it in a type 1. It's more of a residential product, not really a business grade product, and it's called Unraid. You've seen this probably on Linus Tech Tips. They had a fantastic video actually that it was one box, two gaming PCs. And it was kind of neat to see they stuck a box right in the middle and then put two monitors on each side and then created different virtual machines within this box to run two workstations off of one PC. Um, cool. <laughs> it's all I really got to say about that. There's not real much uh, real world application for this type of software. I think it runs like 60 or 70 bucks, so it's not expensive. And if it's something that you want to tinker around with, by all means, do it. I've actually downloaded the trial version of Unraid, installed it, messed around, and I figured out real quick, this really isn't for me because I have no interest of doing that. And it's not really that good of a hypervisor from a type 1 perspective, and it's not really a type 2 to where I'm going to be doing other stuff on it. So I was... Uh, kind of turned off by that entire thing, but I still had to mention it because other people have mentioned Unraid and I want to bring it up. It's not something I'd ever recommend anyone learning or spending much time on because it's more of just a hobbyist uh, software title. I, I, I just don't have any other way to put it because of its classification here. But with that said, that's all your hypervisors and now I wanted to get into something else mainly called containers. Now, this is kind of the future of virtualization when it comes to containers. There is just such advancement going on in this realm to where many traditional servers are just being sunset. I've done this personally in business where I had one leftover server that had like an old line of business application on it. And that's really all it was there for. And uh, it's a waste of resources because that line of business really didn't use much resources. It did need a full VM. It did need a full operating system. It just was legacy software that I just had up and going. That's when containers kind of came in. And the most, uh, the biggest container software on the market is Docker or Docker Enterprise, depending on which one you choose, but definitely Docker would be the big one. The other one that I will mention is Red Hat's entry in this, and that's OpenShift uh, or Kubernetes. Uh, I probably botched the actual wording there, but Red Hat's version and then Docker. Uh, Red Hat is kind of starting to make a splash in this because it's a very powerful uh, way of doing like enterprise storage and containers. But um, it's still nothing I'm not familiar with. As one of the early adopters of containers, Docker is really what I learned on and what most businesses uh, transition to before kind of OpenShift and others really hit the market, at least in the business realm. I was not really in tune with the Linux scene at when I was actually doing this, and Docker was pretty much the only um, dog in the fight back then. So with that said, Docker, amazing. What it is really is taking that application, putting it in a container, or it's called a container, and it's able to run basically on bare metal without any operating system. So it's like wine for applications, but it doesn't need Linux or any operating system to run on. It, it's just a great thing because I can put this on a, one server that runs these containers and literally install 10, 20 of these different containers running different operating systems without almost any overhead uh, compared to if I did a VM for each one. 
which is incredible. So that's what containers are. That's why there's a bunch of uh, people saying, oh, containers are pretty much going to kill virtualization or kill hypervisors, which isn't true. There's always a place for hypervisors. But what it did do is it really helped cut down on the hardware costs. So the thing I haven't really mentioned is why virtualization? Why do people care about virtualization? And really the long story made short here is instead of having 20 physical computers in a rack, I can have one computer. I mean, one physical box. They call them hosts. And these physical box can pretty much span uh, 20, sometimes even more. I mean, there's some really, really powerful hardware out there today that can just virtualize pretty much anything, which is amazing. So virtualization is basically what's called a physical to virtual or a P to V. And that's taking these physical boxes and putting them into virtualized environments. And over the past 10 years, that's where everything has gone in the data center. I can't remember the last time I saw a physical box that just had one server operating system without a hypervisor on it. I mean, it's just so rare these days. Occasionally you get some of these old vets that say, hey, you have to run a domain controller, bare metal, physical only, no virtualization. And I'm not one of those. I, I don't subscribe to that thought process. If you want to do that, fine. Dedicate a host to that one and just leave it there. But to not virtualize it, I think is a mistake. There's no risk, I think, going from a P to V. I like things virtualized. I find it a lot easier. If there's a problem with that domain controller, I know I can reboot it easily and I don't have to drive to the data center to physically hard reset that computer if it were to lock up. If that uh, uh, container locks up, I can easily reboot it. I mean, there's so many benefits to having things virtualized that is just incredible for business. So in the past 10 years, everything moved from these physical servers to the virtual or the VMs. And then in the, really in the past couple years, you've seen more of a migration from VMs to containers to where if a VM was only being used for one or two applications and those can be put in containers, well, it, would, it just makes perfect sense to do that. You'd take them from that virtual machine, put them in a couple containers, throw that in your Docker instance, and you're good. And that's kind of where things are going in the business realm and virtualization. I kind of went over this a little fast, so you might need to rewatch this video, but uh, at the same time, it's really good knowledge because many people don't understand virtualization and they kind of try and pigeonhole everything into one bucket. And there's really multiple different facets of virtualization. And I hope that clears up a lot of things for you all. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here and let me know in the comments what you think. Did I miss anything? Is there anything as far as virtualization that you would have liked to see? I know I didn't actually show any clips here of the different virtualized environments, but there's just so much that goes into this and this being only like a 10 minute video, I'm, I like to go into each one of these virtualizations independently and kind of show them off and show the differences. But with that said, I'll see you on the next video.